Let's turn our focus on the wingers. Now, let's start with Nico Williams. News came out yesterday that Arsenal are planning to make a move for Nico Williams this month after following his development for some time. Sources have told Court Offside, Arsenal's interest in Williams, who has a 50 million euro release clause in his contract, is driven by Mikel Ateta. So, first up, Cousin, hearing that Arsenal are planning to make a move for Nico Williams, does that, you know? like take your mood over the moon and you're like yeah thank goodness we were getting this way you're like uh no nah, i'm not sure about him and maybe another one but nico williams is linked to us what do you make of that i'm 100 percent sure about him he is a sensational talent he can play on the left hand side and on the right hand side you're going to see him for spain on the left hand side and i trust me if you are not on the um, if you're not supporting Spain, it won't be a pleasant, you know, experience. Now, his release clause is actually incredible, like really, really incredible. With all these rumors going around, the Aston might not sign a, um, might not sign a striker because of uh, uh, the lack of opportunities and the lack of talent. Nico Williams is a massive shout, like really, really massive shout. I mean, we are talking about a, a, a young man that has the ability to compete directly with Trossard, Martinelli, and Saka, right? Um, mm. We are talking about a young guy that is benching players like Danny Olmo for Spain. We are talking about mm. a player that is benching the likes of Ferran Torres, uh, you know, for Spain. I, I have no doubts about Nico Williams. Like, and I also know that Arsenal followed him for quite some time. That's why that report is very, very, uh, you know, I would say a, 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 a hit of dopamine for me. It's, 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 a, it's mm. a very, very satisfying hit of dopamine because like, is it like one year ago that we, we was, we started getting links with him, uh, since mm. Pedro Neto, um, you know, Wolves were asking for 70 million, 80 million. Arsenal looked at alternatives, right? We went in for Rafinha. Rafinha was expensive. He wanted to go to Baka. And then we looked at the younger talents and Nico Williams ever since then has been one of the players that Arsenal have slowly but surely been linked with. We've modern, monitored him uh, and we've, we've looked at him his release clause comes into effect this summer if we can get him i'm not sure we can but if we can get him that is a very good deal that is a very very good player for that price i was so surprised i was like 50 million nights yeah. i can't wait to see him uh, playing for spain because i watched him the last couple of games for spain and it's just been incredible on that left side like it's yeah. kind of a, a younger version of a liar i'd say liar is more like yeah because he's played yeah. for, yeah, he's for more time level. and yeah so, so nico williams you can see i saw people in the comments saying it reminds them of ronaldinho you know the skill on the left yeah. side you know you're dribbling and you know, all that the pace could be an extra Naldinho. Now, they're talking about 50, uh, okay, it could be 58, 49, whichever. They're talking about some different figures, but it's somewhere between uh, 45 million pounds and 55 million pounds, somewhere around there. So, talking mm -hmm. about 49 million pounds, that's an incredible price. Do you think um, this this is a no-brainer, basically, for 9 million pounds, around 50 million euros, whatever, uh, to, to get him? It's, it's a no-brainer for me. It's a no-brainer for me because... He's one of those talents. He's one of those players. Remember when um, Man City signed Sane, and yeah. he actually did work out very, very much for them. But when he, they sold him, they sold him for more money to Bayern Munich than they had actually command. You know, they, they, they had paid to Schalke off for initially. So I think he's one of those talents that you know his ceiling is up there. You know that he's um, you know going to be kind of a superstar you just have to invest money in him and then invest time in him and then he's going to be uh you know a world-class player I, I don't have problems there the, i think the price comes from the fact that um he had signed a new deal and he hasn't renewed yet it's kind of the benjamin mm -hmm. sesco situation and i don't think atletico bilbao are really you know sitting there holding their hands to, to their chest saying anyone who has 45 49 million Please, I think they're trying to sign his uh, sign him on a new deal uh, very, very hard and very, very quickly because, like, that is a 75 million euro player. That is a 65 million pound player, uh, you know, there in Nico Williams. If you think about how much wingers have been going for, let's talk about it. Rafinha to Barcelona. Arsenal are willing to pay 60, 66 yeah. million for Rafinha. And really, like, really, right? So for me, Williams is not... Um, that's not a that's that's not a, an expensive deal that is a no-brainer and i won't be surprised 
if he ends up in the Premier League, not at Arsenal, but to another club. I've seen Manchester United working with um, uh, figures around 35 to 45. Chelsea working with figures around 45 to, uh, to 50. I think most of the clubs this summer are not looking at 100 million pound signings, 200 million pound signings. They're looking to bolster their squads in, in, in line with FFP. Can we get some good players for 40 million, 50 million? And Arsenal have actually had started very well. When you look at Onana, mm. that's a good deal for less than 60 million. You look at Sesco, that would have been a good deal for less than 60 million. You look at Williams again, that's a very good deal for less than 60 million as well. So for me, it's a no-brainer. You go in there, you pay his release close, and you know he'll bring in a player who's going to develop almost at the same level and at the same pace as Saka and Gabriel Martinelli. Mm. But why I also think it's a no-brainer is... I think Arsenal need to start selling well. And, and, and this is about mm. Arsenal, you know, getting players that we can shift on and move on like Man City are doing. Uh, you know, they could sell Alvarez for 80 million. C can mm. you imagine? They could sell Alvarez for 80 million. And guess who's going to replace him? Savio from Girona, who, who, who is part of the City group. And they bought him for, I don't know, like, what, 20 million euros or even less than that, um, you know, like a year ago or two years ago. So I think... In, in terms of that, it makes a lot of sense. Get these deals, take advantage of 45 million pound deals, and you could move on this place for 70 million. You could move on this place for, um, you know, 80 million. When they say we want to move on, we're not getting enough time. Or, so, or like, like players like Ferran Torres, he said, I want to go to Barca. My dream is to play for Barcelona. And, you know, City just made their money, and, you know, it was simple as that. So it's, it's, it's a deal that makes a lot of sense in all angles. Five goals, 12 assists. In La Liga, eight yeah. goals, 17 yeah. assists in all competitions. Are these numbers that get you excited or are you like, uh, he needs to add more goals to his game or 25 goal contributions, you don't care even if it's zero goals and 25 assists as long as he's getting the returns or do you think he needs to add more goals? I, I think he's still young. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of uh, the case of Joao Neves, just that Joao Neves is very, very overpriced and very expensive. I think yeah. I, in most of um, uh, in most of the, uh, the 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 market deals we are going to see this summer we are going to see more of prospect signing rather than uh you know deliver i, I don't think right now if you want a player to deliver for you or simon 100 million so i think in terms of the prospect in terms of what Arsenal will get right I, I think it's okay the numbers are all right i mean we've seen so many wingers you're looking at them we have been linked with desire due i think um you look at their numbers and like, well, the, the, the trickery is there, um, the talent is there, but the numbers are still not, you know, crazy, crazy numbers. But I think with um, with him, Williams, you have numbers that are convincing, numbers that are going to improve and become better. And you also he's also playing in a Bilbao side that you don't expect them to have, you know, Vinicius Junior numbers, Rodrigo numbers, Kylian Mbappe numbers, non really, right? Um, I think they're kind of below in terms of the food chain, you know, in, in Spanish football. So I think his numbers are okay. His numbers are, you know, promising. They can go rapid. They can be made to go rapid. And especially if he can get regular team, you know, a, a game time at a club like Arsenal and, of course, and a manager like Mikel Arteta. So I think his numbers are all right. Now, if his numbers can be improved because he's young, he's 21, he's turning 22. Um, mm. I think he's turning 22 in um, July. So if you're saying his numbers can be improved and all that, can his, um, his playing position, because he's predominantly a left winger, he's played like 90% of the games as a left wing, and our left wing already has Martinelli and um, Trossard there. So do you think he will actually be used on the left side and Martinelli could actually move completely on the right side as you've seen the last couple of games? Or do you think Nico Williams will be used in both and maybe even go and just play with Sack on the right side and, you know, that would be that would be a nightmare for defenders. You will have a lot of rotation there um, yeah. and I've always loved a player you know, a player who can come on even for second or whatever and give the defender still a hard time. Pace, dribbling is very good at it. Why do you think it's going to play mostly for us? I, I think in terms of positioning, um, he's predominantly played on the left-hand side, but mm -hmm. he's also got that very, very good, uh, you know, left foot. Now, with Mikel, one thing we have seen is he loves inverted wingers. He doesn't want... Um, direct wingers to cross in not really he loves mm. their you know he loves direct wingers uh, so inverted wingers no sorry not direct wingers so 
because he's got that left foot that is nice and you know for spain again we will see him he's going to be he, he plays more of um uh, of of a, of a traditional winger role on the left hand side but at bilbao sometimes he's played on that right wing he's inverted mm. with his um left foot just like you've seen saka so i think that is that's what makes him i, I think stand out as compared to most of the prospects we have and most of the uh, targets we have that is very efficient on the left hand side and it's also very efficient on the right hand side obviously any player who can play on the left with his left foot is going to be very efficient on the right because it's uh, on the right you just have to cut in and maybe shoot cutting and um you know kind of you know uh, bring in those mini crosses that we've seen from Saka a couple of times um that have been you know nice i mean what i think there was one for for kai havers against brentford uh in the first leg i love that so trust one against chelsea yeah, the trusted one, the trusted one against Chelsea. So, so those kind of mini crosses, those kind of mini balls. So, in terms of um, position, I don't think it comes in with a nailed position. Like there's a lot of establishment at Arsenal. Saka is established. Martinelli, despite the fact that um, we undermined him, or maybe some people undermine him, he's actually established as well. Um, and trusted is established as well. So, I'm not. I won't be surprised to see Martinelli shift inside a little bit more especially if Arsenal don't send a center forward uh you know Martin is shifting inside a little bit more Nico Williams yeah. partnering up with um with Trossard to form a long-term partnership and then Gabriel Jesus partnering up with uh with Saka to form uh you know to form that you know if Saka is not around then Gabriel Jesus you know comes in but I think he's going to first and foremost do each and every role right that the manager has for him as slowly but surely he finds where he, his position is in this Arsenal system when you get players in that probably is at the expense of others and Rhys yeah. Nelson has said you know what you have Saka you have Trossard you have Martinelli you're being into a lot of wingers what about me well I think it's time to move on and according to David Onstein Rhys Nelson informs Arsenal he wants to assess options for potential transfer this summer Arsenal rejected approaches in January plus would want 20 million including add-ons if decide if they decide to sell um Crystal Palace um that is Fulham, Nottingham yeah, Fulham. Forest, and West Ham among 24-year-old wingers and um, suitors. Now, for you, Cozy, um, if it was just up to you, your decision, and you, you're sitting down with um, Nelson, would you tell him, listen, I feel like you're a good player. I actually want you to say I'm going to use you more. Or uh, Maybe even if I bring in Nico Williams, he's still going to play a few games here and there. Or do you think, you, do you actually rate him? Do you think he could go to the next level? Or do you think um, this is probably what he's going to be as a player, you know? 14th 15th on the table and not really the player who's going to take it to a premier league title i do rate him i rate him mm. highly by the way mm. but below top seven on the premier league mm. table like mm. I, I wouldn't see him at a club like brighton i wouldn't see him at a club like newcastle I wouldn't see him at a club like um, Aston Villa, and this is my uh, this is my reason. When I think about Brighton, I think about Karo Mitoma, I think about Soli Match. I think those players are far more productive in terms of end product and output than Rhys Nelson. When you think about Moussa Diabe and um, and Leon Bailey. Bailey at Aston Villa, when you think about Gordon at at Newcastle. I think the level of, of 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 forwards and wingers at top six, top seven, top eight clubs are incredible. Does he start ahead of Bowen? You know, he doesn't really. There's no question about that. So I see him, I rate him highly. I think he still plays in top 10. And I think the clubs that have actually been linked with him are the teams I would, I would advise him. My, 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 my conversation with him would be face-to-face, -face, honestly. And this is what I would say. I think you've got great potential for you to go and, you know, carry a team for two three good seasons like olise has done like eze has done like william has done like um you know they could overread did for fulham and and such players right but for you to for you to to be able to do that you've got to be honest with yourself and honest with your talent this these are the clubs that are going to allow you all the time you want and all the uh, trickery you want to do on the pitch right 
like Crystal Palace had uh, a player like Wilfred Zaha. Zaha could dribble, do whatever he could, and uh, do whatever he wanted. Score one, score two, assist one, mm -hmm. assist, uh, assist two, and they win the game. Zaha is the king. End of the Premier League season, Zaka has 12 goals and 11 assists. And you're like, this guy assists every game. This guy scores every game. How does he have 11 goals and 11 assists? He should be having like 20 goals and 25 assists. So that is, um, for me, that is Bruce Nelson. My conversation would be very brief and very, very um, precise. Go and make yourself useful at a club like Crystal Palace Fulham. Now, these days, we have seen that you can be called up. Like, mm -hmm. how many how many players does Crystal Palace have for for England? More than Arsenal, actually, isn't it? Three. Watson, as a uh, yeah. Gehi, yeah, I, a lot. I, I think I think Arsenal. I think Arsenal have three as well. Ramsdale, Rice. I think, I think uh, they have Anderson, uh, the goalkeeper, as well. Yeah, they have Dean Anderson as well. So four. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're four. They're four players. Like, it is unbelievable, right? So mm. I think with Rhys Nelson, what is shocking for me is that Arsenal have to be informed that re, uh, by Rhys Nelson that is going to assess his uh, uh, options. It should be the other way around. It should be Arsenal finding, working with Rhys Nelson to find solutions to, for his future and maybe because of that new contract arsenal don't feel don't don't want to look like um you know kind of traitors hypocrites you just do you, do you think do you think you should have got do you think you should have gotten that new contract do you think just be as harsh as possible do you think he overstayed his, his welcome at arsenal absolutely absolutely the only reason he 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 signed that new deal was Mikel Arteta. if if mm. it was Mourinho, do you think he gets that deal he absolutely doesn't because we know oh. Mourinho will throw you under the bus. He'll say you're not good enough. He's not good enough. That's why he's not playing football. So I think uh, with uh, with, with Rhys Nelson, he's overstayed his stay at Arsenal. And um, that contract is going to be a big problem. Like Arsenal feel like they have a lot of power to negotiate over a guy that they have, they, they have not given any football, um, you know, when he's been available that, and fit. That was going yeah. to be my next question. Do you also think, because people will say, Ata never gives them chances anyway. Do you think Ata has been harsh on him and he doesn't really get chances or do you think he's actually just not good enough to get those chances? I, I think Mikel knows that these players are not good enough. Edin Ketia is not good enough to stay at Arsenal. Rhys Nelson mm. is not good enough to stay at Arsenal. Albert Samilakonga is not good enough to stay at Arsenal. And a couple of others. We have seen him do it, do it with Chambers, um, you know, prolong his stay. And then eventually, you know, he, he goes to Aston Villa for pennies. Then we've seen him prolong the stay of Rob Holding. He cost us a title or, you know, one of the reasons why we, 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 we lost the title. So I think he already knows that they are not good enough. Why he's giving them huge contracts? I mean, are you really protecting their value? If you're protecting their value, you can give them, you know, you can, you know, improve their contracts, but really don't give them a hundred K a week. What is mm. Crystal Palace supposed to do with a hundred K per week? What is Fulham supposed to do with a hundred K per week? What is like Nottingham Forest sup supposed to do with a hundred K per week for a player who they are not sure? you know walk straight away into their team and becomes as important now if palace are going to sell olisa for 60 million yeah are you really going to tell me that they're going to sign one guy and that's Riz Nelson to replace michael olisa never in a million years they're going to sign one Riz Nelson, and then they're going to mm -hmm. go uh, in brazil maybe and then sign another player right so for me mm -hmm. it's 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 disastrous why well, yeah, th that contract is kind of um it's kind of shooting ourselves in the foot but also it's kind of selfish for Mikel Arteta and Arsenal because maybe they know they are not ready to they're not yet ready to upgrade their project to the level they want so they just want to keep these players around as you know homegrown players